Hey guys, I'm Mariah. Welcome to AppleDiaries.com. Here is another video uh, blog, vlog. Um, I wrote this post and I posted it today on social media, but I had, I've been getting such a good response from messages from people saying that they really like the posts to be read. And of course they're on the topic of health and wellness and how to heal thyself. This one's called We Created. Um, please like, share, and subscribe so that I can be inspired to make more videos. And let's get started. So, dabbling in the world of symptom relief or managing symptoms can only take us so far. And it does not address why we experience pain and symptoms. We created optometry to compensate for our failing eye health. When the eyesight is involved, this is a clear indication that one is dealing with systemic acidosis. That's from head to toe. And the head area is generally the last to, the last area to become involved unless it's a genetic weakness um, or a genetic, genetic issue, with, which simply means you did not create it solely in this lifetime. And why is the head area the last to heal? Well, because it's the furthest away from the kidneys. Um, this is why neurological and eyesight issues generally take the longest to heal. Yet they can still be healed. Isn't that amazing what we've done to our bodies over the course of a lifetime? And we can even heal genetic issues, which we were told were you know, we're told by the allopathic community that they cannot be healed. Well, we've proved that one wrong, haven't we? Um, we created dentistry to compensate for our damaged teeth and gums when our internal acidic condition becomes systemic once again from head to toe. The acids leach through the gum areas and creating inflammation and acids are corrosive and damaging. And when our diets are predominantly acid Forming foods, our teeth pay a price. Um, the dentist can drill, fill, or remove the teeth affected, but this does not heal or address the root cause as to why we have or experience teeth issues. A dentist doesn't heal anything, and these types of issues will persist until real change is incorporated. I can talk about the, the issues I went through with my teeth along this journey, but they've since healed. and. Um, you know, it, it's amazing how the bo the body can heal and to fix issues. I mean, I went through a lot of, you know, teeth and gum issues along this journey, but I stuck through it. I had faith in the process because I knew what was happening and uh, I've reaped the rewards as a benefit. So we created pharmaceuticals to suppress uncomfortable symptoms. Um, pharmaceuticals are amazing deceivers. They give the individual the illusion of wellness because they can mask and cover up horrible symptoms um, or pain associated with those symptoms. And when we take any synthetic drug, they accomplish driving the symptoms deeper within, numbing our nervous system, and while adding more acidic waste uh, that gets backed up throughout the body. So they create long-term damage with short-term relief. Yet, when they're numbing your nervous system, that's why I said they're amazing deceivers, because it's deceiving the body into feeling, you know, well enough to carry out everyday tasks, and then one will never do anything further to heal their issues. They'll just rely on the pharmaceuticals until one day the body's had enough. And uh, I know what it's like to rely on pharmaceuticals, because I was there for pain, and I was told that I would remain on pharmaceuticals for a lifetime and that my condition uh, was incurable. That's what a nerve specialist told me. He said, you would be taking pain medication for your entire life if you don't want to suffer. Anyways, we created surgeries to cut out and or replace damaged organs and glands or to cut out the symptoms uh, that can generally be healed with time, patience, and creating a long-term alkaline environment within. Um, most, un I'm not saying all surgeries are unnecessary, but most surgeries are, and um, it's it's sad, you know, when they remove little girls' tonsils or, you know, like 
all our organs and glands play a necessary role within the body. No, we don't have an extra kidney. No, we don't have extra blood. It's all there for a reason. And <clears throat> I'm not... Anyways, when we remove organs and glands, we set ourselves up for further complications down the road. Medical doctors will, will often state that we are fine with just one kidney. I already addressed that. <laughs> Anyways, and the tonsils are not necessary. Really? Come on. They're necessary. They serve a vital purpose. Um, they, they serve specific purposes and all body parts are necessary to function the way the body was designed. And uh, removing parts does not heal anything or address the root cause, once again. And it does not address why the body became damaged in the first place. We created chemotherapy to kill cancer cells. Nothing kills damaged cells. Chemotherapy only succeeds in damaging and dehydrating already damaged cells and organs and glands as well. So when you're, say when that tumor is shrinking, what else is shrinking in your body? Everything, everything else is getting dehydrated and shrinking as well, which they fail to mention. Yes, your tumor is shrinking, but not in a healthy way. We can shrink tumors through a hydrating and alkaline diet, diet over time. That's been proven, but with chemotherapy, treating an acid condition with an acid is absolute insane. In fact, it's uh, borderline, well, it is, it's criminal. Anyways, um, cancer is not an illness. Oh, this is a, a quote that I put in here from Leonard Coldwell. Cancer is not an illness, cancer is a symptom. These cancerous growths the cell growths, whatever it might be, that we don't want in the body is a symptom. It's not the cancer. So cutting the symptom out does not resolve the problem at all. And that's why it reappears. Uh, your organs shrink, the brain shrinks, and the tumor shrinks because they dehydrate the body. That's what I just said. Maybe that's why I said it. Um, so now at the same rate, uh, your organs are shrinking, your tumor is shrinking. Woohoo! But uh, now they say it's working, the tumor is shrinking, it's one of the biggest frauds ever. And that's Dr. Leonard Caldwell. I have the window open here and the sprinkler was just spraying through on my computer, so that's why I just moved. <clears throat> okay, so I could go on, but I am sure that you get the idea that most services and items created, we created to compensate for our poor dietary choices over generations and over years. And all vitamins, minerals, products, supplements, etc., are not recognized by our bodies either. And they do not do anything for healing the root cause. So we just have to recognize, you know, things for what they are, truly. Our bodies, oh, I already read that part. How do we heal from the damage we've inflicted upon ourselves? We learn, we apply, we unlearn. There's a lot to unlearn. We take an interest in our own personal health. We pay attention to the chemistry, the foods that we allow within our bodies. We learn which foods have an acid ash residue, residue within and which ones have an alkaline residue within. So these are, this is the metabolitic uh, byproducts created after um, the food you ingest gets, break down, gets broken down. Um, we eliminate dairy from the diet first and foremost because as you know that's the most mucus forming concentrated product that we can ingest and it, and it creates a myriad of health issues within including copious amounts of mucus build up throughout the body um, I could go on so we eliminate dairy first and foremost with the wheat as well, unfortunately it's loaded with glyphosate, it's a complex carbohydrate. Um, I mean, I'm not saying not to ever eat wheat again. You can eat it again after healing, but if your goal is detoxification and healing, then I'd eliminate the wheat. Um, and if you do cheat with it once in a while, toast it really well to eliminate some of the mucus forming properties. Eat it with a salad for better elimination. Um, so we, uh, we eliminate the eggs and the grains and the fast foods and of course the animal flesh because that's highly parasitic it's putrefactive it's it's uh, a stimulant and you know <laughs> listening to all my other videos I know you know what animal flesh uh, how it reacts within the body and how it's not conducive to promoting health whatsoever 
So, and, uh, you know, fast foods, restaurants, all these places, they use harmful oils. They use, you can't be healthy if, if you're eating at these places. I mean, once in a while is okay um, for a regular vegan diet, but during health, I mean, dur during a healing process and detoxification, we need to simplify our diets to the point that the body has to use very little digestive energy so it can put that energy towards healing. And uh, so what else do we do? We flood our bodies with water-rich, hydrating, alkaline, cleansing astringent chemistry such as fruits, raw foods um, for the long term, lots of leafy green salads, things like that. And uh, we try and get the best quality possible. And we do not fear the release of our past poor uh, dietary choices. We, we do not feel the release. The release is the elimination. The release is, is the pain and suffering that we must go through in order to get well, you know. Either way, we're going to suffer whether we continue on with our harmful habits, we're going to suffer. Or if we get into healing and detoxification, there's a certain amount of suffering in a sense that we have to go through in order to get well. But at least with the healing detoxification part, we know that there's light at the end of the tunnel, so to speak, right? Because it's once we've healed that, we've healed that. And if we do not, you know, introduce damaging foods again afterwards, uh, we're golden. So, and uh, we change our lifestyle at our own pace. We created our health issues. We created our own health issues. There's nobody else to blame, unfortunately. We can blame our parents for the genetic involvement, but uh, that's a never-ending cycle because they can blame their parents and so on. Well, we were all deceived to and lied to equally or, or had the wrong information, so there's no one to blame but ourselves. And pain and disease are symptoms resulting from that which is already within, from many years of wrong acid-forming foods so we must endure some discomfort as we, as we release the toxins, acids, and mucus, which I just uh, explained. And that's how we get on the path to wellness. It is fairly simple. It's not rocket science. Anyone can do it. It just takes a lot of commitment and standing up to societal and family pressures, really. And know this. Fall in love with the process. Don't look at it like you're being restricted. Look at it like you possess some knowledge that you are now applying and you are the luckiest person in the entire world to be able to have the opportunity to do so and you're not missing out on anything. Those foods that people are eating that may smell good and look good, and they won't look or smell good forever. I mean now when I walk past fast food restaurants, I actually have to plug my nose. It's, it's pretty gross. But um, at one time at the beginning of my journey, I would smell and I'd be like, hmm, I'm missing out on something. But I don't look at it like that. And I don't feel that way anymore. I feel that they're missing out on something, unfortunately. I wish everybody in the world could uh, get this knowledge and, and apply it, you know. How much better would this world become if people were all healthy and, you know, the addictions would fall off. And Anyways, I could go on. And uh, it's a relatively small price to pay, considering everything that we put ourselves through. Thank you for listening. Please, uh, I already said that. <laughs> Have a nice day, everyone. See you in the next video.